can't give me some a little bit. That body make me smooth, just a little bit. A lot of times I keep it cool, let me get it good. Look, baby. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Today I want to show you potters how to do something that's a little bit more fun and utilitarian for your household, but it also kind of requires you to be an intermediate potter. Today I'm going to show you potters how to make a birdhouse out of clay. If you don't know how to make it in closed form, I just released a video on it. It looks just like this. I will leave that link down below for you. But as far as making a birdhouse goes, it's actually pretty easy. You just have to make it in closed form, make sure the bottom is super flat, make something to hang it on because you'll probably be hanging it from a tree or somewhere on your house. And then you just like jam a little stick where the hole is and you're good to go. But today I'm gonna show you how to make an actual birdhouse. You know, the cool thing is you can always use this birdhouse as a test style because believe it or not, most birds are happy with you giving them a house. They kind of don't care what glaze you put on it. First, we have to make our enclosed form. Potter tip. Usually whenever you make an enclosed form, you can kind of pick the thickness or thinness of your own vessel. That's kind of for your own utility. But specifically for the birdhouse that we're gonna be making today, we're going to be making an egg-shaped enclosed form. But because it's gonna be functional, we're gonna be hanging it outside, and it's probably gonna be in the elements like the rain, wind, and sun, you don't want it to be super thin. So I'm not gonna pull a second time. If you get a good height on it, let's say about six or five inches, go ahead and start making your enclosed form. But you really don't wanna make it too thin specifically because it will be outside and wind will knock it around if it's super light you know and then it'll break all the birds inside and that's not the point of a house is to break so now we've already gone over how to do an enclosed form on the channel before but at the point in which you get about halfway done with your enclosed form and you start choking in the top to make that form really enclosed you wanna start thinking about bellying out your form. As I said before, this form is gonna be an egg shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my metal rib or what have you, stick my hand inside before I close up the very top here and start bowing out that belly. You also wanna leave about one fourth or stop three fourths going up the body. This is the space that you're gonna to need to enclose the form as we talked about in the other video. Don't go all the way up and then be like, oh no, I have no room left to close my form. Of course you don't have any room left to enclose your form. You spent all of it by stretching it. Now for the rest of it, this is what you need to be choking in to make it an enclosed form. This is essentially gonna turn it into a small little house. Now at the point right before you're about to close it up because the air is going to be trapped inside for a bit, you want to make sure everything's nice and smooth and even right before you close it up. So I'm just going to clean up the body a small bit before I end up taking off the rest of this clay body and choking this in. Don't worry about this part being too messed up up here. Usually when people close in a form, this kind of happens and one of two things are going to happen. You're either gonna cut this part off with your pin tool as I've taught you in the channel before, or you're gonna close it up and you're gonna use it for either a handle or something to hang your birdhouse from. If you see this, just leave it alone. Trust and believe later on in the video, it will fix itself. One of my favorite things to do whenever I make a birdhouse out of clay is to just smush this down and this will be the part that the string or the chain or whatever I'm using hangs down from whenever I hang it on a tree or a house or whatever have you. Now you have this little space for the string or the chain or whatever have you to tie around the neck of this item so that it can hang perfectly from wherever you're hanging it. You see, now you have this perfect little egg so you can cut a hole in here, put a stick right here, and the birds can go in and out as they please. If you make a super small one, you can actually use it as a bird feeder. Hold on, let's give it a little bit of flavor before we go, huh? Hey. 
This is honestly the most difficult part of the process. You have to learn how to make an enclosed form, and then you have to try and find something to hang it by. Whether that be the egg itself by trimming a nice little line in here, or you make a net for it, whatever have you, you have to find a way to hang it later on. I just put this little neck right here so that I can just kind of fast forward that step. Let's run that back one more time just so that you can see how easy that is. Making the enclosed form for a birdhouse is actually just the first half of the equation, but it is the most difficult half. From this point on, it's kind of easy sailing. After this, it's really just drawing a bunch of circles everywhere and cutting out certain spaces. But for now, it's suggested that you just let it dry for a little bit, at least until it gets to the leather soft phase. So we're gonna wrap this up because it's 100 degrees outside and I don't want it to dry out too fast. And we're just gonna wait maybe about a day for me, but for you, it's probably gonna be about three seconds and a cute picture of a dog because this is showbiz baby what what it's like this but it's yours, it's yours and it's mine, it's mine. Uh, girl it's you all the time As I said before, the majority of the work is pretty much done as far as these vessels go. The hardest part is throwing the entire vessel within an enclosed form. After this, all you really have to do is cut a hole, and sometimes I like to cut little auxiliary holes in here just so heat can escape in the summer. You have to remember, these are ceramic, and because of that, if you live in a very hot or humid place, a lot of the heat gets trapped in here and doesn't come out too well because ceramic likes to uh, hold a lot of heat. But I am not very good at drawing circles, which is why I bought some of these. These are something I got off of Amazon, and it's a bunch of little circles tied together. There's a bunch of different sizes, and I basically pull out one of these each and every time I do this technique, put it directly on the clay body, considering we're carving it, and it is in the leather to leather soft phase, and I just keep twisting it until it pretty much cuts a hole. And there you go, a perfectly cut hole. And after I make the main entrance hole, I usually like to make some auxiliary ports up here. Like I said, something for heat to escape. You can either use a hole maker, which are very easy to find. They are actually called hole makers. Or you can use your potter's knife and just twist it into a little hole. I'll do both so that you can see what the difference is. The only 
real difference in between making one with a potter's knife versus making one with an actual hole maker is that the hole maker makes far cleaner holes, while this one over here you're gonna have to clean up a little bit, which isn't too bad of a job, half the job's already done by me just rubbing my finger over it, and you're gonna have to clean up these ridges anyway because you don't want these jagged edges for the birdhouse. Crafting standard matters for us, so we're gonna be wiping this entire thing down anyway, so either one of these two tools is fine, there's no real preference. Just as a little recommendation, I would say it'd be a good thing to buy these homemakers because not every single one of these types of birdhouses or enclosed forms are going to be the same size each and every time. So this one here is a little bit bigger from this one right here. And this one here is way smaller than this gargantuan thing right here. Unless you're making them all the same size, I would definitely invest in these kind of little cookie cutter-esque homemakers. Okay, now here's the thing, you are pretty much done. You could totally leave it like this, you could hang it in a tree, you could hang it on your porch, you could hang it wherever, tie a little string around this, let it hang, and little birdies will come inside of it all day long. That sounded wrong, I apologize. Well, thank you Dirty Products for joining me today. I just wanted to show you a way that you can utilize using an enclosed form, because there's so many people who are like, what's the point of making, there's no functionality to an enclosed form. Yeah, there's actually tons of functionality. There's so many things you can make with an enclosed form. The issue is that you have to learn to make an enclosed form closed form first and that assumes that you've been through a couple of beginner phases in order to pull off that little trick but thank you dirty potters for joining me today hopefully this is helping a classroom somewhere that's learning how to make like birdhouses or utility for certain ceramic objects if you like this type of content make sure you click all those youtube buttons so that i don't disappear into a massive uh, pool of debt and my youtube overlords are happy with me they do not have me to a chair reading this off to you right now i am safe Good luck on your next art projects, and I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. Thank you for your patronage. I'm over here making YouTube content out of enclosed forms of old recycled clay that I have, and these birds are like, yo, free birdhouse, yay, yay.